Hi everyone, thanks to Lab Muffin Beauty Science for kindly inviting me to speak on its channel. This is very exciting. I hope you are all doing well despite the situation with COVID-19 and all of that will be behind us very soon. So my name is Fred, Fred Lebreu, and I'm the CEO of Biorus. Biorus is a consultancy company specialist of safety assessment and regulatory compliance dedicated to the cosmetic industry. So on a daily basis, what we do is we evaluate cosmetic product, we check their safety based on toxicological information, and we also check the legal compliance of this product before they reach the market. And when I say the market, I speak about the European Union, the US, Japan, or the Australia, or in many other countries. Today, we are 50 people in the company, and we evaluated more than 10,000 products only for the European Union. Me, personally, I'm a chemist, I'm a PhD in medicinal chemistry, and I'm also a toxicologist. I have more than 10 years of experience and I evaluated many cosmetic products. Beyond my role of CEO, I'm also a teacher and I teach young students how to evaluate the safety of cosmetic products. Thank you. So the first question I received from Lab Muffin Beauty Science is, what's the difference between hazard and risk? And the fact is, there is a big difference between these two concepts. Even so, NGOs or consumers don't understand this difference. Um, to explain, I will use a very simple example, the example of a lion. So the lion is intrinsically dangerous. I mean, it's a hazard. A lion by itself, has big claws, big teeth, it can, it can really kill a human. I mean, it has the potential to be very hazardous, but it doesn't mean automatically that it is risky. What does it mean? It means that if you go to the zoo and you are behind the bars, there is absolutely no risk. The lion is dangerous, of course, it remains dangerous, but there is no risk because there is no exposure to this lion. If you are in Africa, in a safari and you are in front of a lion and there are no bars between this lion and yourself, the risk is very high because the hazard is the same, but the exposure is not the same anymore. The exposure is much higher. And at the end of the day, the risk is, a, is an equation. The risk is a product between exposure and hazard, which means that if there is no exposure, even so the hazard is very high, the risk is very low. And when you come to cosmetic products, it just means that a substance by itself is not good or bad. This is more how you are exposed to this substance that is so critical. And when I say the exposure, I mean, how many times you put it on your face, the concentration of this ingredient in the product, and some other criteria. So it's very imp important to understand that what really matters is not so much the substance and its uh, danger, but more what you do with this substance and, and the risk. So I talked about hazard, I talked about risk and the exposure making the link between these two concepts, but there is something else. And this something else is the dose response curve. So what does it mean exactly? Um, this is the description of how the risk is going to increase when you increase the exposure. Let's take back the example of the lion. When you are at a distance of two kilometers of a lion, there is no risk at all. It cannot see you, it cannot smell you, there is no risk, okay? And then you increase the exposure, so you get closer. You are at one kilometers, 500 meters, 300 meters, you get closer and closer. And the idea of the dose response curve is the risk is going to quickly increase, okay? Now, let's take the example of an ostrich. That's another animal that can kill a human. So it's a hazardous animal. Is it as hazardous as a lion? Obviously not. Both animals can kill a human, but the dose response curve is not the same. 
Um, to get a significant risk with an ostrich, you need to get very close to an ostrich, which means that both animals are hazardous, but those response curves are not the same. The ostrich only represents a risk when the exposure becomes very high. And this concept is important because some substances present in cosmetics are more kind of lions and others are more kind of ostrich. And I could give you an example, glycerin. Glycerin is more a kind of ostrich. You need a lot of glycerin before it starts to represent a risk, while vitamin A, which is an active ingredient, is more kind of a lion, which means that you, with a low concentration of vitamin A, a risk can already take place. And this is an important concept. So what I just described, difference between hazard and risk, is really the basis for safety assessment in the European Union. But there are some exceptions, and these exceptions are linked to how um, some substances are perceived by citizens in Europe. And I talk about CMR. So CMR are carcinogenic, mutagenic, reprotoxic substances. And these substances are considered are so bad that um, it, it was decided by the regulators to, to ban them completely. I mean to regulate these substances on the basis of hazard. It's a bit like saying, okay, because a lion is dangerous, because it represents a hazard, we are going to kill all the lions of the earth. And because there is no hazard, there is no exposure and there is no risk anymore. That's a very harsh way to regulate, but this is what has been decided for CMR, so carcinogenic, mutagenic, reprotoxic substances, simply because they are considered as so bad that we didn't want to have a risk-based approach for their regulation.